Cribb. John Cribb joins us. He's the author of the highly acclaimed new historical novel, Old Abe, and, uh, with the anniversary of the Gettysburg Address upon us, i.e. today. Um, John, what are the similarities between what's going on here and this very small attempt to uh, change the Lincoln election? Well, you know, there's been a fraud around in American elections for a long, long time. And uh, I guess I guess it's, it's nothing new. I don't know if we've ever seen anything on this scale. If, if, and I was watching some of that press conference uh, with you uh, also. But I mean, if, if, if this is true, and they seem to have uh, a lot of good evidence that needs, at least needs to be looked at, um, this may be the largest uh, example of fraud in, in U.S. history. But there was always, um, you know, always fraud going on in elections. Uh, Lincoln suspected at, at times that uh, people were being shipped across state borders uh, to vote in certain localities, and, and they were, you know, they would they were put on trains and, and shipped shipped across to, so they could vote. And the, of course, it was much harder to to track people where they lived, where they came from, uh, back then. But um, uh, he managed to overcome them. So hopefully, we'll manage to overcome them today too. So um, let me ask you this. Uh, Mike Pence, apparently, the president, the vice president of the United States, recently called your book, Old Abe, the best Lincoln book I've ever read. You must read this, he said, and the Civil War Monitor wrote that it will appeal to generations of readers. What are the, I, I would encourage my viewers to go out there and learn about our history and what it took for Old Abe to become president. Um, but what are some of the things um, that Abraham Lincoln had to face just to become the president of the United States? Well, of course, he was a uh, long shot candidate, just like President Trump was. Um, and uh, there were four men uh, who were considered the, the leading candidates for the Republican nomination. In 1860, when he was first elected, William Henry Seward of, of New York was the, the main candidate. And uh, so it was a long shot for him to even get the nomination. Uh, he did, though, because the, uh, the, lead, the men who were considered leading candidates all had something going against them. Either they were considered too radical or they had said something to make you know, somebody mad. But Lincoln was, people were okay with Lincoln. I'm talking about Republican. So he gets the nomination. But then to win the general election, um, he has to run against, of course, uh, against the Democrats. Uh, the Democratic Party split over the issue of slavery in the Northern and Southern uh, votes. And then there was a third party, the Constitutional Union Party. So um, Lincoln is able to win that election because the Democratic Party is split. Interestingly, he wins with less than 40 percent of the popular vote in the United States. Not one single person. Uh, he did not get one single vote in the entire South. And I don't mean he got one elect didn't get electoral votes. He didn't get any votes in the South. And that's because they kept his name off the ballot completely. You couldn't even vote for Abraham Lincoln if you wanted to because his name wasn't on the ballot. So, so uh, you know, the, to me, the correlation is um, there are cities and precincts in these usually progressive towns run by, you know, the Democratic machine, basically, you know, in Wisconsin, in Minnesota, in Philadelphia, in Atlanta. There are places where, much like Abe, 150, 200,000 votes came in, not one of them for Donald Trump. So being they couldn't get him off the ballot, I guess they figured we'll make up some new ballots and we'll replace them only for Biden. Yeah, they did it the opposite way. It's looking very fishy. It's looking kind of like history may have repeated itself in that respect. It, it's, it, pretty, it, it's pretty crazy. Um, yeah. Today is the day, the anniversary of the Gettysburg Address. And uh, for those of us who only remember uh, four score and seven years ago today, how did that one address kind of shape history? Well, it, it, it helped change the Civil War from a war uh, simply to save the Union, preserve the Union, into a war, of course, for both uh, to save the Union and free uh, the slaves. Uh, because Lincoln says that they, we need to have a, a new birth of freedom, as he puts it. And he starts off that address by talking about a nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. That's straight from the, the Declaration of Independence almost, right? So he's calling on Mer Americans to, uh, to rededicate themselves to our founding principles that are found in the Declaration of Independence. And that means freedom and equality for all human beings, uh, no matter what your skin color or where you're from. So that would include uh, the slaves. So he's, he's really, it's a giant pivot uh, to change the way people think about the Civil War.
Yeah, and uh, we got just about a minute left here. Um, it is strange how over time the Democratic Party has shifted the narrative from the guy who was fighting to end slavery to the Republican Party being a bunch of racists, right? Um, yeah. Are we again repeating history right here and right now by a tremendous PR campaign to fool the public? Yeah, I think history repeats itself over and over and over again. And uh, people, I do wish people would remember that the Republican Party was founded uh, to combat the evil of slavery, uh, largely. It was founded, and the first Republican president, Abraham Lincoln, was fiercely dedicated uh, to our founding principles that say that uh, all men are created equal and we all have the right to life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. That's what the Republican Party has stood for, uh, for since its beginning. No doubt about it. All right, my friend, thank you very much. Really appreciate you joining us. Sorry we had a preempty there for a moment, but uh, right. I would encourage my viewers to go out and check out Old Abe, John Cribb's newest uh, tome, Even the Vice President Loves It. Lots to talk about. Hour two coming at you right after this.